uh, to try to overcome some of those stereotypes that have happened to the church through others who have failed, you know, always considering ourselves so we make sure we don't fall in the same traps. And uh, I think the creativity is going to be a big part because, sure. you know, that's what's going to attract because you got to have the bait. And, and again, that may sound like a, a bad term, but Jesus did say he would teach us how to fish men. And so you got to have the right kind of bait. And so, um, which means doing some things that's just not to this. It's like we got a group of uh, singles who are going to go to Norfolk, Virginia, uh, go to Norfolk, Virginia in a, in a few weeks, and they have this boat that have what they call a gospel cruise. And they just go out in the, uh, you know, a few hours in the ocean and back. And, and these kind of things, um, you know, hear music and have some groups up there singing. It's a nice boat. And that's just an idea of something that people can do that's kind of out of the box. Then through the married couples in the church, uh, we have a maximum marriage ministry where we teach principles of Christian marriage because, of course, the church is just a group of families, so the church is no stronger than the families in the church. But they also do community projects along with their outings that they do. They also do two projects a year, like we do the home. They do. They work at the homeless shelter. Uh, they did a clothing drive for <coughs> homeless. We have a, a sure. one of the local churches here does a soup kitchen mm-hmm. to feed the homeless. So they volunteer. There's married couples at the soup kitchen, and so these are just some things that you know we do as service projects sure. in the community sure. to you know to be to be visible in the community, especially among those who are less fortunate. Sure. And and Pastor Lawson, I got a, a question that just came in uh, from Phil on the East Coast, and he was wondering, does your ministry work with um, other community-based organizations when you're doing your programming? Yes, um, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, um, we do. We work with, uh, you know, we're, we're in the... We, of course, we're in the coastal plains, so one problem sure. we have down here is flooding. When these hurricanes come in, we're only an hour, hour, 15 minutes from the ocean. So, you know, we work here with through uh, with the Red Cross in the local in the local area and some other local uh, agencies, again, like Friends of the Homeless. Sure. So uh, uh, the local soup kitchen. Okay. And, and then the... the uh, I got a follow-up question. Uh, off the the, line. Oh, I'm sorry. And the uh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. And uh, we work real close with the Salvation Army. Oh, here. fantastic, fantastic. Part, part of them, yeah. We do we they, we help do bell ringing at Christmas and that kind of thing. So try to help them as well. Sure. And and also uh, another one of our listeners wanted to know what type of uh, programming do you have for the schools? Um. My son, who is the youth minister, uh, he volunteers as a mentor, and he has a class that he does with young men because we really try to put a lot of emphasis on the young men. Um, as you know, as we said, most of these now what are inner city, what's called inner city high schools uh, in our area. Um, well, to show you, this, I just give you a statistic at the local high school. Sure. Uh, in the in the eleventh and twelfth grade, they did not have any Caucasian students at all. So the city has kind of, uh, you know, the city has come to a place now where it is uh, very predominantly black. So we really try to impact with these young people again because usually where you see a lot of crime there's a lot of poverty sure and that is the, that's the case in our city there's a lot of poverty uh so that's that's probably the reason we have a lot of crime so we get in the schools and try to do some mentoring uh with um with students especially the boys 
Uh, and, you know, if there's a weakness we have, we probably haven't been as strong with the girls, per se, as we should. But sure. we've really been trying to to work with young men. And, like, we have some young ladies who say, you know, y'all have a basketball tournament every year, and you never have, you know, the girls here play basketball, too. Sure, so we thought sure. about it, and so that's something we're going to have to branch out in because the girls are saying, you know, we don't we don't get some of the stuff you're doing for the boys, you know. Sure, right. sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Pastor Lawson, I will ask you a question. This is Pastor C. Um, yes, sir. And I'm sure that you can share with me from a pastoral perspective. But in this age that we're in today, how important do you think it is for a church or an organization to be uh, savvy as it relates to technology? Do you think that the church, from your perspective, should have a pulse in this um, this age of technology. Yep, most definitely. Um, most definitely. I think. I think you do. Um, you should. Uh, but you know, I do. But along the same line, one thing I would add, though, with the technology is, uh, I think when it comes to the presentation of the gospel. I think it's got to be presented in a way where it is very applicable and relevant, relevant to everyday real life situations. In other words, uh, it has to go beyond history, and we know the Bible is his story. It is history, but it's got to get to the point. It's got to be presented in a fashion where I can take a principle that Jesus taught applied to my real life situation and and get life success uh of course the goal of christianity is not necessarily life success the goal of christianity is to bring about christ-like character in people okay. uh and of course he says you know you seek the kingdom these other things will be added but i think one thing we got to do along with the technology is the presentation of the gospel has got to be uh, relevant to these people's everyday life where they can take a principle from the word, apply it, and then reach success in life. I think that's the hook because it's like Jesus, you know, he went to these guys who've been fishing all night. They weren't catching anything. And, you know, he said, you got to put your, you got you to, you know, get on the right side of the boat. A lot of people are on the wrong side of the boat. And they got to understand the principles in the word, not just stories. Because, see, even the, there's some preachers that's great storytellers. But then mm -hmm. my father's generation enjoyed the great stories of the Bible. This generation will know how that's going to help me pay my rent, how that's going to help me raise my child. And so I think along with the technology, because, you know, when Peter and the guys went in acts, you know, and I know it's different times, different changes, but people are the same. But they didn't have a website, they didn't have a Facebook page, but they had, they had a, they had a gospel that proved itself in in people's everyday lives. Right. So I I think that's a big challenge. So I don't mean to evade your question. I think being you know, having Technological savvy is important. Uh, I think we ought to be represented on all those channels, on all those uh, means and methods. But I think the, the, main, the real hook is I have something that can work. And, again, that's why, you know, that's why a lot of very wealthy people don't embrace the gospel because they feel that their wealth is their answer. You know, I got, you know, I got money, I got houses i'm doing better than most christians sure when they don't realize that that's not the end result because actually uh some people really need to hope that the bible isn't true because uh -huh. if it is true which i believe it is mm -hmm. they're gonna have some real problems in the afterlife <laughs> right okay because it's not all about this life it's about the afterlife 
And so I think we got to, we got to, I think it's a real challenge. This is a real challenging day for pastors. I think it's very challenging. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to, we're going to have to really be creative. Sure. Uh, we, I think we're going to have to present it in a way that will hook, will hook people to doing it God's way and then seeing success from it. And then the people tell it, you know, it's just like the lady Jesus met at the well, you know, when she left, she went in town and told everybody, you know, come see a man. So I think Uh-oh. if we if we present it in a way that sure. will uh, show people how to how to do life, you know, Jesus, I come as you have life. Show people how to do life. I think they'll spread it. I think it'll spread through the community just like it did even in the book in the book of Acts, even though we may not have the websites and all that kind of stuff. We have something that actually works. You know, like the man told, Peter told the man, I don't, silver and gold, I have, have, you know, I don't have any, but I got a name that can fix your situation. Sure. Okay. And I think that's, you know, that's where we are. Well, I, I didn't mean to evade the question. I think we need to do all the technological stuff we can. Now, one thing I don't do, I don't do it because where I'm in, the, in a rural area, we don't have the capabilities of getting the uh, the podcast going. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, I think podcasts are something that actually can work against the church because uh, a lot of millennials don't go to church. They just look at a podcast. And okay. I think there's sure. something to the corporate gathering. Yes, sir. That you can't, that you can't get on a podcast. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, well, I, I tell you, Bishop Lawson, this has certainly been a, a great conversation and we certainly needed to hear from uh, a person that's been in the in the vocation of, of saving souls that could kind of give us some perspective because like you said there have been high profile situations with some of the larger churches that have led people to say you know what I'm done with this I'm just going to you know get up in the morning and I'm going to turn on the television do my thing and and keep it moving so it, it's just been great hearing the the things that you're doing at Jumping Run. So before we go, just kind of tell the audience how they can tune into your services and, and uh, that type of stuff. Um, our website is www.jumping, J-U-M-P-I-N-G-R-U-N, church.org, www.jumping.org jumpingrunchurch.org oh that's one word jumpingrunchurch.org uh, our, our church our church was named actually by ex-slaves okay uh, there's a there's a body of water that runs through the church property it's a ditch and the church the road to the church goes over the ditch and the days before the road was there it, it would rain and wash out so the people had to jump and they called the body of water a run. Oh, okay. So they had to jump the run. Oh. And that's gotcha. that's how the church got its name, Jumping Run. The congregation itself is well over 100 years old. Wow. wow. And, um, and so I've been there for 33 years. And, uh, of course, the Lord has blessed us greatly to grow. And it's in a perfect location. That's it's in a rural area, but we're, we're but basically a drive-in church. We have sure. three buses. We bring we bust people in on Sunday, and um, and so it's jumpingrunchurch.org. dot awesome. org. Also, awesome. we're on the local mm-hmm. NBC affiliate here okay. every Sunday morning. Uh, it's witn tv dot com, and so um, I believe some of our broadcasts may be able to be seen live we're not able to live stream because we're so far we're so far sure. in the country sure. that uh we don't have that telephone wire capability well, that's okay well again, we have a facebook facebook page of course jump and run church facebook certainly, page certainly. well again thank you so much bishop lawson for spending some time with us yes sir thank you for having me i really appreciate it Yes, sir. And, Thank and, you for your time, Bishop. And, Pastor Lawson. And Pastor, it's nice, nice talking to you. Maybe someday we'll get to meet. Absolutely, sir. And, and of, of course, course as, as you heard, um, you know, when when we return, we'll we'll get into some other things. But again, 
Uh, Pastor Lawson, thank you for serving God in the community. It don't get no better, as they say in grammar school. So, uh, Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you much. And when we return, we'll return. We're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to talk a little sports. So when we return, we're going to have Hall of Fame sports report. 